Rachel Paris, and yes, I am here to bring the noise. Yes, um, I am um, what you call in show business a, a triple threat. Um, I do comedy, and I do music, and I will cut you. <laughs> Just joking, I probably won't. Um, so. It's so fantastic um, to be here today. Uh, I will be doing a little bit of music, so if you're a fan of NWA or Snoop Doggy Dog, then uh, <laughs> I apologize. I'll be about three minutes. <laughs> uh, so this first song, this is about uh, traveling on a train. Could you give me a cheer, Apollo, if you've ever been on a train before? <laughs> about half. OK, great. <laughs> Lovely. Well, the half of you who cheered, that means you are my target demographic. Congratulations. Um, so I'm going to sing this song. This is about the worst thing any of us can ever encounter on a train journey. Just before I sing it, uh, I have had some problems at previous gigs, actually. So I just want to make something crystal clear. If you listen carefully, I'm not even saying the word Hindu. Listen harder. Hindu on a train. Hindu on a train. Cowboy hats and penis cakes. Neck tattoos and big L plates. And voices like a foghorn in a drain. Hindu on a train. Groping every passing mail. I suspect you've been to jail, and God willing, you might all go again. And although I have so many things to say to you, I'm aware that there are six of you, and all of you have had more fights than me. I've never glassed someone, but I do know how. <laughs> Perhaps I'll glass you now. <laughs> Hindu on a train. You brought your own speakers too. Brilliant. <laughs> to belt out Calvin Harris tunes. I mean, the maid of honor's clearly on cocaine. <laughs> Hindu on a train. See me staring and you threaten me Then drunkenly you all set on me And with a dick-shaped bottle take your aim If you only knew We're not so different, me and you Just three months ago my friends Hindu We got drunk and we pretty much hijacked a plane We were worse than you We went down Reluctant gay men, some women too. We got thrown out of Spain. You see, we're all the same, but you're not listening, you're bashing out my brain. Hindu on a train. to be here with you. It's so exciting. I'm very intimidating as well. Um, I do have something called imposter syndrome. Has anyone heard of imposter syndrome? A few of you have heard of it. Yeah, yeah, some of you clapping, which is not really what it's about. <laughs> imposter syndrome is where you feel unqualified for most of the situations you find yourself in, in life. It's where, it's where you feel like you don't deserve to be where you are. So I, it's rare that I feel like I deserve to be where I am. I mean, sometimes, not always, sometimes you find yourself in a gum clinic after a big weekend and you think, yeah, this seems fair. <laughs> I do think the universe has a way of like, letting you know that you are exactly where you're meant to be. It gives you little reassurances. And this happened to me a few months ago. I was in London's glittering Soho, as I still call it. And um, I was outside a nightclub. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go in. <laughs> and a young girl came up to me, right? A young girl came up to me and she said, excuse me, are you Rachel Paris? 
Now, what you have to realize is, that's my name. <laughs> For context, it's important. So she said, she said, are you Rachel Paris? And I said, oh, yes, yes, I am. And she said, this is amazing. Um, I literally just found your debit card on the pavement over there. <laughs> That keeps you humble, um, you know, uh, and that's important as well. A situation that really, like, flared up the imposter syndrome last year was I got invited, believe it or not, to go back to my old school in Loughborough to give an inspirational speech to the graduating class. What were they thinking, asking me to go back to give an inspirational speech? I just, I got the email, I just assumed it was the education system's biggest administrative error since Michael Gove was born. <laughs> But I, I said yes, it's good to talk to young women. It is young women at my old school. I went to a girls' school. I don't know how surprising that is. I'm very aware I, I come across as a massive virgin. <laughs> I do, I know I do. And I'm not even, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was rather boastful. But, um... <laughs> I did go back uh, because they said the reasons they gave in their email why they would invite me to give a speech are twofold. Number one, because I'm a feminist. You know, when I am a feminist, of course I'm a feminist. Of course I am. I'm obviously a feminist. Who isn't? Who isn't? Who isn't? <laughs> I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, no, but sometimes when we're talking about feminism, we're talking about different things. What I mean when I say feminism is this. Number one, you believe men and women are equal. Number two, you believe that equality hasn't yet been achieved. Number three, you want to do something about that. Number four, you want to be best friends with Tilda Swinton. <laughs> and number five, you despise all men. Now, I... I <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke. Obviously, that one is optional. <laughs> but the other reason the school said they invited me was that I've had what they called, and I quote, an interesting career. An interesting career, which I think we can all agree makes me sound quite a lot like a high-level prostitute. <laughs> Uh, but I have had an interesting career. Uh, before I got into comedy, uh, I was in the music industry. I did music before I went into comedy, like Billy Connolly or Cheryl Cole. <laughs> I had lots of different jobs in music. I was um, a music teacher. Um, I sort of sang in a choir in a church. I worked in a music shop for three years. Um, I did like music editing. I was in the Sugar Babes. Um, <laughs> who wasn't? Who wasn't? <laughs> Can I cheer if you were also in the Sugar Babes? <laughs> About half. Yeah, OK. Uh, statistically, that sounds about right for the Sugar Babes. Uh, I, I was a piano teacher, actually, just until last year. I worked in a primary school, and something started happening right with the piano teaching a few years ago, and I don't know whether it's just the, I want to say, genre of child. <laughs> is that OK? I want to say that. That is sort of how I refer to them on their reports. Peter is going through his noir period. <laughs> Sally is a joke. So this started happening with the piano lessons, right? And tell me, the teachers in the room, I wonder if you'll recognise this, the children would come into the lesson, it applies to any subject, they'd come into the lesson, they'd play something like Jelly on a Plate. We know Jelly on a Plate, don't we? Jelly on a Plate, it's an absolute banger. Jelly on a Plate, join in if you know it. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble, Jelly on a Plate, tune. <laughs> they play Jelly on a Plate badly, because they're a child, and then, they'd say this. That was easy for me, Miss Paris. I found that easy. <laughs> Which puts you in the really awkward position of having to explain to that child how shit they are. Because <laughs> you can't let that lie, can you? So I have to say, well, it's not easy, is it? Because if something's easy, then you do it correctly straight away. <laughs> and you're doing it badly. And it's taking fucking ages. <laughs> Obviously, not always, but they've got an incredibly high level of self-confidence, these children, which I try to grind out as soon as possible. <laughs> but, like, the vocabulary of Stephen Fry and the guile of a young Richard Nixon. They've also started uh, being very good at diplomacy, like politicians, these children. They sort of they know their rights and they know how to get out of things. I used to teach a boy called Sholto, and he would sort of waltz into the lesson. I don't use the word waltz lightly, though. He's been having ballroom dancing lessons since he was three. <laughs> He'd walked into the lesson, and he'd say to me, in a voice rounded off by years of elocution, he'd say, 
I haven't found the time to practice jelly on a plate this week. <laughs> uh, but I will try my absolute best for you now. And you can't ask more than that. <laughs> he was six. <laughs> Who's been teaching children diplomacy? Honestly, I feel like I'm teaching the next prime minister. It's so sinister. Like, the, the way they get out of things is really sinister by saying these things. Like, they say things like, you know, they might as well be Tories, like, jelly on a plate means jelly on a plate. You know what I mean? Like, just because you say something means something, it doesn't mean you know how to do it. And it's absolutely crucial if you're saying something means something that you know how to play jelly on a plate, how to do it, you know, because sooner or later, making those excuses doesn't actually work because you have to learn how to perform jelly on a plate. And, you know, you've learned pretty quickly because your grade one is soon. Your grade one is in March 2019. <laughs> so by March 2019, you really need to know, for the sake of all of us, how to play jelly on a plate. It's really important. I didn't actually vote for you to take your grade one in March 2019. Your parents voted for that. But, um, you know, they pushed it through. They had the majority. I was voted against it. I would say it's not worth it. I would actually say it's probably not too late to withdraw you from your grade one. But they said, uh, no, let's do it. Jelly on a plate is simple enough. Uh, it'll be ready by March 2019 and something about sovereignty. But nonetheless, I was like, not too late to withdraw. It's been a waste of money with the application fee. It's been a waste of money so far, but better to do it now and then avoid all of the upset later. But no, they were like, let's do it. You've really got to learn how to play jelly on a plate by March 2019. And everyone thinks jelly on a plate is going to be simple. Why would they think it was going to be simple? If anyone was to ask anyone, they'd say that nothing is ever as simple as it seems. A short one. Hindu on a train, <laughs> cowboy hat and penis cake, pink bindi and big L plate. This Hindu's on that Hindu on the train. <laughs> I've been Rachel Paris. Thank you very much.